The PC is considered by many to be the best gaming system around for various reasons. You get the best graphics, free internet access, perfect emulation of all consoles before the 6th generation, mods and more. With all of these perks, it's hard to forget the most important one of all, exclusive genres. Okay, not so exclusive, but really, RTS games work only on the PC. We all know CNC and StarCraft, but when a new IP emerges, take my advice. Always take a look. That new IP I'm talking about is Sins of a Solar Empire, one of the pleasant surprises of 2008. Definitely the most epic game ever created, the logo of Sims sums it up perfectly. Real-time strategy, unrivaled scale. So, how good is Sinning Like an Emperor? One of the only disappointing aspects of the game, the story in Sims is almost non-existent. You get the basic setting from a short intro movie, but that's it. No campaign, no story mode, no in-game lore, nothing. As shallow as it is, all you need to know is that an alien race, known as the Vasari, once the rulers of the greatest empire in the universe, are on the run from a monster that completely destroyed their kingdom. You also have the Advent, some religious wackos that serve as the psychic race, and the TEC, or Traitor Emergency Coalition, your usual human faction. There isn't much more to this, but in a game like Sins, you don't really need a story. Unrivaled scale? You bet your ass. In scenes you do everything from colonizing planets, to building trade routes, to spreading culture, to being a diplomat. And of course, like every RDS game, you also have to battle the opposing forces, unless you decide to become allies. Sins employed a complicated turf tree divided up into four categories, military, civilian, fleet and artifact. Military provides combat upgrades and new units to unlock. Civilian mainly focuses on your negotiating skills, economical abilities and resource extraction. Fleet is used to expand your army, and artifacts can be found while exploring planets to give you extremely powerful abilities. You start your game with only a frigate factory, two construction ships, and your capital planet, and from there you have to build and explore by yourself. To properly create an empire, you have to invest in every planet you colonize, because if you don't, it will cost you some cold hard cash to take care of the primitive civilization. You acquire the game resources, metal and crystal, by building extractors on small asteroids around your planet, while you earn credits from taxes. In order to stabilize your economy, you must build trade ports and resource purifiers to step up your industry. Your army is comprised of frigates, cruisers and capital ships. Frigates are the basic ships that you can buy and are very cheap. As you unlock more parts of your tech tree, you can also build cruisers, which are much more advanced. They can hold many small fighter squadrons, heal nearby ships, bombard planets, or disable enemy abilities. The leaders of your fleet are the capital ships, which are large vessels of awesomeness. They require you to build a separate building, the capital ships factory, in order to be built, and are extremely powerful. They also gain experience and level up as they fight, unlocking various abilities along the way. The number of ships you can handle is determined by your ship supply. Basic frigates tend to require less supply, while cruisers take more. Capital ships take the most supply, but they also require specially trained crews, which are numbered as well. Both the ship supply and commander crews can be upgraded, but as the size of your fleet increases, so does the upkeep cost. You can build diplomatic relations with other players by completing missions which they assign to you. If you fail, the player will become angry at you and the connection will be lost. As you achieve diplomatic points, you can agree on pacts with other factions, from trade agreements to peace treaties. The problem begins when you are facing the enemy AI, because you have to wait until they assign a mission. It becomes quite annoying to wait for a long time until you can start to build up your relationships, but apparently that has been fixed in the expansion pack, Sins of a Solar Empire, Diplomacy. Overall, like many other strategy games, Sims focuses on the four X's, explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. The main difference is that the other four X games are turn-based, while Sims is a real-time strategy. This is manageable, however, thanks to the game's slow pace, which can make larger games take up several hours. Sims runs on the Iron Engine, which was specifically built from scratch for this game. There is only one word to describe it, amazing. You can use the smart zooming mechanics to look at the, an epic battle before going back to your planet in a second. It is also graphically impressive, boasting great looking ship and effects while running smoothly, even on older systems. 
The sound doesn't fall short, with usual RTS voice acting and scores as epic as the battles. Like many strategy games, Sins has a lot to offer. While the unusual decision to leave out the campaign mode is pretty disappointing, you have plenty of pre-made maps in various sizes to play on. There is also a galaxy editor to create your own scenarios and a random map generator to make the game's lasting power virtually infinite. The AI has dif different difficulty levels and personalities, and multiplayer works like a charm when you get bored of beating the computer. Sims of a Solar Empire is a rare effort to change the RTS genre. While the influence from games like StarCraft and Civilization is obvious, the game is beautifully designed and is one of the deeper titles available on the market. This kind of scale can only be executed on the PC, and games like Sims make console owners want to buy a gaming rig of their own. I give it a 9.5 out of 10. Go buy it now.